Peace for Christmas. Welcome to our community, our virtual community that is joining us this morning here at the Monterey Center. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you. We're continuing our December theme and The theme is the journey of becoming. For 2021, our focus has been on the journey, the journey of awakening, the journey of becoming, a journey of belonging, all the aspects of the journey of living the spiritual life. And today's topic is the gift of a new journey, the anticipation of that which is to come, knowing that that which already is serves as a foundation for us to build on for that which is to come. Can you believe that next Saturday is Christmas Day? So we say Merry Christmas in person this morning. The journey of 2021 is coming to an end in less than two weeks. Wow, wow. Now in the world of effect, we know this is simply the beginning of another cycle and another year. Spiritually, we know that this is just another representation of the continuity of life. Speaking of the world of effect, um, there's a story about little Johnny. Many of you may be familiar with, with the uh, cartoon character or the comic, little Johnny. He's always in trouble. Uh, Google him and you'll, you'll find out he's, he's always in trouble. He always has something that is, um, that is a little just off, off key a little bit. Um, but this is one little Johnny in, is in class and the teacher is giving them, uh, is teaching them about math. And so the teacher says, if you have a dollar and you ask your father for a dollar and 50 cents, how much would you have? Little Johnny answered, $1. The teacher, just in exasperation, said, you just don't understand basic math. Shaking her head in disappointment, little Johnny shook his head too and responded, you don't know my daddy. And so in, in, in our laughter and our joy and our fun times, we also recognize that another aspect of this year, another aspect of this journey is the winter solstice, which is this Tuesday, December the 21st. It is a time for stillness, a time where we pause for a few days and recognize the dwindling light and the lengthening of days that follow. And of course, it's vice versa in the Southern Hemisphere where their darkness is coming into, no, they're going into the darkness. We're coming into the light. They're going into the darkness. It is also that time to listen to the still small voice as it speaks and gives us the mystery for the journey. So we're listening for the mystery and it's out of the mystery that we gain mastery. And so the gift of a new journey is knowing that the sacred continuum cycles upward. It is a time to discover and express our greater yet to be. We greet this with joyful expectancy and awe, following our own star of wonder and star of light. One of my favorite things from our Science of Mind textbook is this quote by Ernest Holmes. Nature will not let us stay in any one place for too long. She will let us stay long enough to gain the experience necessary for the unfolding and advancement of the soul. For me, this signifies that something is always taking place, that change is always taking place. And it's an opportunity to either resist the change and experience the outcome of that resistance or to be in the flow and to go with the change in the full awareness that whatever is occurring is for the unfoldment and the advancement of the individual soul. We know that life is infinite, eternal, and forever expanding. 
And the good news is we can start anew in each moment. We can use the creative process to create the life that we desire and become that which we think most about. We create our experience in life by using the creative process to create for ourselves the life that we desire, recognizing that we become what we most think about. Thus the expression, change your thinking, change your life. If something is not working, change your thought about it. Take the time to go into the stillness and examine it and, and to just ask, what change is there that can take place? Science of Mind teaches that our past is not bound by precedent. We have the power within to change our thinking and our viewpoint about any situation. It is through our active practice of affirmative prayer that we move our consciousness to accept that which brings a new perspective, that which brings clarity, that which brings harmony, demonstrating that whatever we seek to experience, we actually will see in form. This is the result of the creative process. And I take us back for a moment to our science of mind teaching symbol. Remember that it is the circle with the V that is in the middle, and then there are three parts to it. The top part is, and I'll use the illustration that we do for junior church. The top part of the teaching symbol is the seed. And this is, this is where the creative process begins. The seed idea in the mind of spirit, in the mind of God, is planted into the fertile soil, which is the middle portion of the teaching symbol. That is where the, the seed germinates and grows and receives its nourishment. And then the bottom part of that symbol is the plant or the outpicturing. So whatever our thought is, is planted into the fertile soil and the fertile soil nurtures it and it outpictures as the experiences and the examples of our life. This is what is meant by seeing what we experience in form. And so a couple more points to illustrate this gift of a new journey. There's a Zen Buddhist concept that talks about beginner's mind. And beginner's mind is that which encourages us to approach each encounter that we have with each other and each event with a sense of unbiased curiosity. We approach it with a sense of unbiased curiosity. This curiosity opens our minds to the infinite possibilities that are around us. And I really like this as, as I was reading some more about beginner's mind. Uh, it says that the concept is also described as don't know mind. It is an open mind and a clear mind. And so sometimes when we say, I don't know, sometimes the mind just says yes. Well, all the time the mind says yes to, 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 what, we, to what we speak. Wherever we say I am, whatever follows that, the mind just says yes. And that begins to outpicture in our life. When we say I don't know, that also can be an opening for the curiosity to reveal itself, for the answers that we have been seeking to reveal themselves. Beginner's mind is essential as we approach a new year. It's a pause to think about how we are engaging in life. And it is from this fresh new beginner's mind that we envision what might be possible. And I like this illustration. Think about a child. And, and I see this in, in my, especially now in, in my great grand, my great grandchildren. Um, a child's mind is fresh and new and beautiful and full of wonder and excitement. However, growing into adulthood, we may experience the misfortune of that clear eyed vision that true instinct for what is beautiful and awe-inspiring being dimmed and even lost. Rachel Carson writes, if I had influence with the good fairy who is supposed to preside over all children, 
I would ask that her gift to each child in the world would be a sense of wonder so indestructible that it would last throughout life. I know there are times in my own life when I take that moment to pause and reflect that I move back into that place of wonder and awe and mystery and excitement. It's almost like the, uh, I equate it to the anticipation of going on vacation, especially if you're going to a new place, at least for me, if I'm going to a new destination, this excitement and the anticipation and the wonder of, okay, what lies ahead? What adventures am I going to experience? What new sites am I going to see? What new people am I going to meet and interact with? This is all about the wonder and excitement. This is another example of beginner's mind. Another illustration of the gift of a new journey is opening to a new perspective. Emma Curtis Hopkins writes, the world will persist in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. And that's what we've said earlier. What we see, what our view of the world is how the world views us. And so again, it's changing your thinking, changing your objective thinking, changing your point of view for a different results. When we decide to no longer be held down by our past, by limiting beliefs, old paradigms, we create that space for new ideas, for new opportunities and new ways of being in the world. This of course is a result of our inner work the gifts may be expanding or developing. The world needs what we have to offer. The world needs what we have to offer. This is one of the recurring insights from our weekly visioning here for the Monterey Center. Now is the time to see the full expression of your gifts with excitement, vigor, and hope. The world needs what we have to offer. We bring to the world the gift of joy, the gift of love, the gift of peace, the gift of compassion, the gift of harmony, the practice of our spiritual principles that allow us to expand into our greater yet to be. The great bastard teacher Yoda says, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. We can consciously reframe our circumstances. And a third illustration of the gift of a new journey is integrating all of the learning. We know principle intellectually. However, to apply and integrate this knowledge, noticing the difference in our change behavior is another process, it's another experience altogether. And this is where we have the opportunity to engage beginner's mind. This allows us to add a fresh new perspective to whatever issue, challenge, or problem we may have. Take inventory of yourself to see how you have integrated all your learnings and how you can use them to foster an even greater vision, not only for your own life, but for the life of others. And so our call to action this morning is also going to include a spiritual practice. Let us remember that as we go into the new year, it is our charge to shine new light on ancient truths. In many of our spiritual communities during the month of January, we go back to the beginning, go back to basics and review the first four chapters of our Science of the Mind textbook, which establishes the foundation for this teaching. This is shining the light on the ancient wisdom truths bringing them forward into a contemporary experience. We can use our teachings to transform our viewpoint and thus create harmony and peace in our lives. And when there is peace within, there is peace in the world. You know, the song says, let, peace be, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. What begins with, within me reflects on the exterior, reflects on the outer. And of course, we don't have to wait for the beginning of a new calendar year to activate our beginner's mind. 
we have the opportunity to do it moment by moment by moment. We know when we have done our healing work, when we are no longer triggered and we are less reactive. More importantly, we show up to life and, and the situation feels differently. And I just had a recent experience of this. It, it, it's amazing to me how I kind of go on automatic pilot and I don't always recognize the changes and the shifts that I have made in my own life until I have one of those deep conversations like I did recently with, um, with a friend, a dear, very dear friend from my former community. And um, we took a little stroll down memory lane. I don't think it was intentional, but that's the way it worked. And we began to share some of our experiences in this community and uh, the joys and the, sh and the sorrows, the, the personalities that were involved, uh, taking a look at what it was that triggered us. And also looking at taking our own responsibility for what happened in many of those circumstances. And what I recognized during that call is that I was not energized or exercised or upset in any way talking about some of my experiences. It had moved into just this, it, it was in the history book of facts. This is something that occurred. This is how I moved through it. And so this is an example of how healing takes place and our new beginning with a beginner's mind that can take place moment by moment. And a spiritual practice that I'm offering for this week, in lieu of the usual three questions that we ask, uh, this is a spiritual practice and I've asked our tech team to place this in the chat for our Zoom family and into the comments section for those who are joining us on our Facebook page. So the practice is to open one of your favorite spiritual books or new thought material at random, open it at random, and select a portion of that page or paragraph that speaks to you. So be with it for a moment and allow it to just reach out and, and call you to what it is, what the words are. Then mindfully read, reflect, and journal about how you may see this writing in a new way. Many years ago, when the uh, Science of Mind textbook was published in a leather-bound edition, my late wife gifted me a copy, and there was a condition attached to it. And I don't like gifts that have conditions, <laughs> but this, this was a very wise condition that she placed on it. And that condition was to not highlight or write in the, new, in the new textbook, to truly allow it to be a study book so that whenever I went to it, that I would be seeing something with fresh eyes. And as I began to reflect on that, I, grew, I gained more and more appreciation for that. Because when I looked at my regular science, my textbook that I had used for all of my classes, I would look at the highlighting and the different color highlighters that I had used or the places that I had underlined. And I sometimes I would say, now, what was significant about this at the time I highlighted it? So I really had an appreciation for the new unadulterated book, shall we say, that I could look at and see with fresh eyes. And so this is what I'm offering to you this week, to take a favorite book, or a piece of new thought material, or it could be a piece of poetry, something that really resonates with you and brings ease and peace to your mind. Allow your eyes to fall on a passage and then mindfully read it and journal about what you might see new in a new way in this particular writing. Apply this to your life from a perspective that you might not have considered before. Sometimes when we read something again, after having some time passed, we see it with new eyes because we have changed and grown. Another example and demonstration of the creative process. And so our affirmation for this week is the spirit within me makes all things new. And I invite us to say that together. The spirit within me 
makes all things new. Let us pray together. And so in the full awareness that the Spirit does make all things new, because the Spirit is continually revealing itself in new and vibrant ways. This all-prevailing presence is filled with life, filled with joy, filled with the activity of its creation. Knowing that I am an individualized expression of this creation, I live my life in joy and in gratitude and in fun and a consciousness of oneness with all that there is. Affirm this truth for myself, I affirm it for all who are a part of this particular broadcast, wherever you may be hearing it, wherever you may be seeing it, whatever place and time there may be. Knowing that each one, each living expression of God, each living expression of spirit is filled with light. It is filled with joy. It is filled with wonder. It is filled with mystery and compassion. And so it is from a place of deep, deep gratitude that I bless this time together, giving thanks for all that there is in this marvelous life. And I speak my word of blessing for communities where individuals are gathering on their own journey, this new gift that is being given, this new life that is being born moment by moment, engaging beginner's mind, engaging the don't know, and allowing spirit to reveal the vibrancy and the truth of all that there is. I am declaring for each one of perfect health, perfect balance and harmony in every area of life. For those who are experiencing a dis-ease in the body temple or a dis-ease in any other aspect of life, I am affirming that the spirit within is bringing to a complete resolution and it is softly saying in a very, very still voice, all is well. And so we listen, we listen quietly for the all is well, for the reaffirmation that I am one with all that there is. Therefore, in the mind of this creative intelligence, I am whole, I am perfect, and I am complete. And for other prayer requests that re remain within your own heart space, I know that the answer is always yes. That prayer may be for divine right to livelihood. It shows up in physical coins as gainful employment, money flowing in from sources that are known as well as unknown. The abundance of life just pouring itself out into every aspect of our beingness. For those who are seeking right living spaces, those who are choosing to move into a different phase and a different experience of this life journey. I am knowing that the doors and the windows of, of, of heaven, the windows of this consciousness of oneness with spirit are opening up and the path is being made clear. The way is being made plain to whatever it is that the heart desires. And so for this and for so much more, I am truly grateful. I release this word now back into the law, which always says yes, allowing it to be so. And we affirm it by saying, and so it is. I'm going to pause for a moment and remind us that our ministers and prayer practitioners here at the Monterey Center are always available to meet with you, to pray with you and to know the truth for the wholeness and the well-being. On our website and in our newsletter is our contact information. And so I invite you to use that resource. And for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we have a prayer request form on our prayer table. If you would like to fill that out and leave it in the prayer box, uh, the practitioners will be in prayer knowing the truth of all that there is. And so as we move into our time of sharing of our abundance, I want to say 
thank you to all who have supported our Santa project. The gifts have been wrapped and delivered. We thank you for your contributions and um, we are close to the goal. And if you have not made a donation or you would like to expand your donation, please do so. And uh, you may go to our website and our newsletter for the instructions of how to do that. And so let us now share together our statement of abundance. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And on our screen, there are the ways to donate to the center. You may mail in a check to our uh, physical location, 400 West Franklin Street, Monterey, California, 93940. You may make a secure donation to our website and you may also text to give. And we will also be adding the option of uh, giving via PayPal. Um, we have the, the feature set up and we just need to work with our bookkeeper now to get it activated. So that will be another option for you. And so to our Facebook community, we say Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us. And we invite you to return next week where we will continue with our theme, the journey of beginning. And the message will focus on the gift of a new dawn.